Hi there. In this video, I'm going to look at adding a column in Power Query to categorize the brands from the Maven Super Bowl Challenge dataset. I will do this in two ways. One, looking at a hard-coded list of brands, and one that is more flexible and uses lists. You may well say that this dataset is relatively small, so in theory, you could perform these steps easily by just adding a column in the Excel file and filtering and manually inputting these categories, or even use a more complex nested if statement to create the categories. However, if you imagine having tens or even hundreds of thousands of line items, then performing that type of task in Excel becomes more prohibitive, especially if your data regularly updates. I always try to use these Maven challenges to learn something new and share it if I think it may be of interest to others. So if you do find it interesting at the end, be sure to subscribe for my future tips and tricks, as I will do another video on this data set looking at using unpivoting in Power Query too. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into it. The data set contains 10 brands from various industries. For this exercise, I want to summarize them into five brand categories. One being alcoholic beverages, which includes Bud Light, Budweiser. Another for snacks and beverages, which is Coke, Pepsi and Doritos. One for motor vehicles, which is Hyundai, Toyota and Kia. And then services for E-Trade and sports for NFL. Okay. I will do the first option of looking at the hard-coded or static list. If I open up Power Query, I can write the following code to add these categories. First, we need to tell Power Query to add a column following the filter road step and call that column brand category. Next, we need to define, need to define what each row in our new column should contain. Here we are defining the function of a list and then declaring the start of our function. Our whole function is wrapped in a list.anyTrue function, which is just a logical step to check if our inner function is true or false. We then move on to use a list.transform function. Now this function defines our list and then what kind of transformation step we wish to apply. These lists are defined later in our, in our overall uh, function calculation. In this case, we want to check if our listed text value is contained within the brand column of our data set. So we use text.contains. Now, as text.contains is actually case sensitive, what we've done here is added a compare.ordinal ignore case. This helps re remove any errors where we may input values in different cases by ignoring the case of the text. It isn't an issue for our data set here necessarily, but you can imagine it would be useful in other scenarios where your data isn't as clean. Well, that was the hard part. Next is the relatively easier step of defining and aligning brands to categories. This is a relatively familiar if or else logical statement. First, we look at alcoholic beverages. So if our function of a list where the list is Bud Light or Budweiser, then we want to return alcoholic beverage. We will then do the same for snacks and beverages, services, sports, and motor vehicles. Finally, although we don't necessarily need it here, but purely for good practice, we can just add else other to close things out and then hit return. Oh, so I'm getting an error here. It says token right paren expected. So this means that I've missed an ending parenthesis. So I'll just add that in here and hit return again. Oh, again, another error. Helpfully, Power Query gives actual useful advice in their error checking and not just some 
random code of numbers. So you'll find sometimes when you auto add functions in Power Query, it doesn't actually remove what you were typing and it just adds the function to the end. So this is actually a pretty common error to find when you manually write code. Well, it is for me anyway. I okay, so now it finally works. We now have our brand new category column stuck on at the end of our table. I'm just going to reorder these columns using a reorder function, but you can simply drag this column across manually if you want. So I now have my brand and brand category sitting side by side, and you can see that it has had the desired effect. If I then jump back into desktop, you can see the results in this simple table. You can now use whatever metrics you have created to compare both across brands as well as the brand categories or industries to examine if there's any new or interesting trends or patterns. Okay, so now on to part two. Here I've created a duplicate version of the Super Bowl commercials data set that we have just amended. I mentioned that we can create a more flexible approach. This involves creating lists of brands into the respective categories. These lists can then be adjusted for any new brands at any time without having to then go back and change the content of the formula. For example, here where we have hard-coded Bud Light and Budweiser, we will just replace that with a list that contains those brand names and then do that for each category. So let me just convert my five sets of brands to lists by selecting transform and then convert to list for each. Now I have my five lists complete. I can now move to adjust the formula I created previously. If I double click on the custom one step, I can go in and look at the formula and adjust it. I can replace each hard-coded list of brands with a reference to my newly created list. Now that is complete, I can click OK. You will notice there is actually no change. <laughs> That's a slight anticlimax, but this is exactly what we want. It gives us exactly the same result. The only bonus is that if we were to add additional brands to this data set, it would be simple to just update the relevant lists and refresh the data set, data set. So it's easy as. So there you go. Using a fairly robust Power Query function, we can easily categorize brands into discrete groups. One method using a hard-coded list of brands and another similar method using separate lists to give us a greater degree of flexibility. I hope this was of use. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Do you have a better or more efficient method to perform mass categorizations? I would really love to hear or see them if you have examples. If you would like a copy of the, the formula and or the data set separately, let me know again. And if there's anything else you would like to see, let me know too, and I'll see if I can create a video for it. Well. Bye for now, and uh, I'll see you on the next challenge.